But you're standing up behind their desk, you're sitting behind their desk, you know, the computer's on the floor, you drop something, you slide in a USB key, right? Still a physical attack, but it's much less intrusive than, than trying to open the case. Um, but anyway, uh, since all the attack is run uh, from the receiver, that's the microcontroller, you can also put a delay on the trigger, right? So um, you might trigger the attack as you walk by. You see that they're sitting at their machine and they are logged in and it might not run for 30 seconds or five minutes or, you know, some other time delay. Um, that way you're not around, you're not in the area when, when, it, actually, when it actually executes. Right. Let the let the user do the work. Let the, let the user do the work for you. Yeah. Yeah. We might see some of that. Um, all right. So what's it look like? Here's what the receiver looks like. It's a teensy microcontroller. Um, 18 bucks. Small, fun, easy to play with. You can't quite see land behind it, but there's an RF receiver uh, land back there that's soldered on. The quarters just to show uh, show the size so that you can see that it's pretty small. You could probably fake a, a USB key, maybe slightly larger than a USB key, maybe not. It depends on how big the USB key is. Um, this is what the transmitter looked like that, that I built. Uh, and by the way, you know, we're going through the notes here so that um, by the time we get done, this should be easy for you guys to do. Uh, we've got code and, and uh, everything that you need here. So, but this is the one that I built, power switch. Uh, some input buttons and some lights to show me uh, what attack that I'm going to do. Uh, in particular, uh, I'm, I'm using the first two bits to represent the basically the type of attack, well, the, the operating system. Um, I select 0, 1 on those first two lights for Windows, um, 1, 0, which is 2 for Mac, uh, 3 for Linux, 4 for keyboard and mouse type attacks. Uh, and then I use the other two bits to select the actual attack. So. Um, you might plug it up and decide what attack that you're doing later on or maybe you see what OS they're either running or, or they're in at the moment. Uh, and then the transmit key. After you enter it, you hit transmit. So you can set it up, um, you know, for this transmitter which is kind of big, right? You can set it up off of the transmit, stick it in your pocket, keep your finger on it and, and when you walk by hit transmit. Um, Inspiration. I've seen some other people doing some work with this. Um, I saw uh, Adrian Crenshaw, the Iron Geek, uh, do this one. Um, he was programming uh, with uh, a dip switch, and, and when I saw it, I thought, timing. You know, I want to be able to time this. I've got to wait. There's no magic about user credentials, right? I'm waiting for the user to log in, and then I'm going to use his credentials, right? So blind timing's a little hard. Um, and um, so I thought a, a radio frequency trigger would, would be the way to go. And uh, I think Adrian's going on and, and doing some more experimentation with it and uh, he's doing a talk uh, in a little while so uh, you guys look for that and whenever I find you and meet you, I owe you. Um, all right. Three components primarily. This transmitter, expensive, right? 395. Um, sources in the back. It's pretty small. You can see from the quarter there, easy to use. Uh, receiver, a little bit bigger, a little more expensive, 495. Um, and finally, they're both run by this teensy microcontroller. 18 bucks, USB connector, reset switch, uh, all the power ground and data lines around the outside. Um, I really like this teensy microcontroller. And the guy who built it said, make sure you let the guys know that you can do it for other things than, than breaking stuff. And I said, they're not interested. <laughs> <coughs> so in any case, it, it's, it's, it's really cool and we'll talk a little more about it in a minute too. Um, the receiver looks like this. Seven wires. You can solder seven wires, your receiver's done. Um, that's all. Well, okay. Eight if you add the antenna. The antenna's, <laughs> the antenna's optional, uh, but it adds to the range. They claim about 150 meters. Uh, that depends on the transmitter voltages. I really haven't played a lot with it yet. Um, you know, not, not very hard. That's what the actual schematic looks like. It's going to show you which pins to hook where. Uh, 
the uh, the receiver has several of its pins duplicated. It has multiple power and ground pins. Uh, and I'm not really an RF engineer, but I've heard that it doesn't work as well if you don't power them all and ground them all. So I connected them all up, and it, it seems to be working pretty well. Transmitter data sheet is pretty easy: power, ground, data, antenna. That's all you need, and you're and you're done for the transmitter. Other than if you want to build a custom user interface, right? Um, in this case, I built four buttons, or three buttons, four lights, and a switch. Um, I should put some uh, some other pictures, but a lot of that really is is junk I found around the house. I didn't. Uh, I pulled those little buttons out of an old DVD player that was bad. That's what's hiding behind the buttons that are on there. And uh, the little switch uh, I got out. Uh, we have dollar stores where I come from. You know, you buy everything in there for a dollar. And there was a little night light. I had those switches and batteries that I used in another project. So that was great. Uh, and there's the pin assignment for the Teensy. I have a bunch of these cards. If you guys want one of the cards about the Teensy, see me in the question room afterwards, uh, and I'll hand them out. Uh, thanks to Paul, the guy who who built it. Um, again, you know, I, I love the Arduino and the Teensy. Uh, they're great devices to to work on. And if you haven't done stuff like this, and I know some of you have, and some of you haven't, uh, this is I think this is a great little device to start with. I've done. Uh, Played with lots of microcontrollers a little off and on over the years, and and I like this one a lot. There's a schematic for the interface: four lights, three switches. Um, you know, you guys have done this before. You know that for the switches, you usually need pull-up resistors. Well, you can; uh, those are built in. You can you can turn them on on the on those data lines, so you don't need those. Uh, pretty easy to do. I built it in this uh, eyeglass case just because it was handy and cheap and and had plenty of room and and seemed pretty solid. Uh, cut it out, screwed it in. Uh, had had room for you know big batteries, relatively big. Those are triple A's, um, and it all fits in the same case. And this is where the magic happens, right? This is the receiver, and it's tiny. You know, it's teensy, I guess. Um, <laughs> but the uh, the teensy's on top, uh, the receiver's on the bottom. A little bit of epoxy to hold it together. Uh, you could case it up if you want to, build something around it. Uh, the uh, the actual uh, adapter there uh, is available from uh, Deal Extreme, and I don't know if you guys know about them, but I buy lots of junk from them. <laughs> it's a great place to buy cheap electronics from China. Well, it turns out the receiver is always receiving bits, right? It's picking up noise and it's deciding one, zero, one, zero. So you get a continuous stream out of it. Um, that's uh, kind of difficult, right? Because we're looking for particular, um, uh, you know, particular information. So uh, I built a, a simple uh, transmission frame uh, to deal with that. It begins with a three or more byte carrier of uh, AA and hex. Then it's followed by a command sequence number, and we'll talk about that in a second. And then the command byte. That's the attack that the receiver is going to run. We identify it with a byte. Right now I'm just using four bits, but you know, you could easily run uh, up to a byte with the code that, that I've got. Uh, and finally, uh, a checksum, because again, this radio frequency can be pretty noisy. We want to make sure that, that it was received correctly. We don't want to run the, the wrong attack. You know, maybe it was. It's supposed to be a demo and it ends up erasing all their files. That'd be bad. <clears throat> all right, the transmitter also, for each attack, transmits that frame 10 times. Again, it's for redundancy and noise. Um, and at this point, people always ask, well, isn't that running the same attack over and over again? And the answer is no. Uh, that's what the command sequence number is for. So um, the receiver. If it, if it receives a, uh, a valid command frame and the command sequence number is the same as the previous number it received, it doesn't execute it. It has to be a different number. So uh, that way you can send the same uh, command uh, transmission frame over and over again multiple times and the receiver will only execute it once. 
Um, the transmitter will, uh, you know, and then somebody else asks me, says, oh, well, what if you want to hack it more than 127 times? <laughs> I don't know. Now, the, the transmitter will actually roll over uh, and start back at zero. And the receiver really doesn't care. Uh, it just wants to know that the number isn't the same as the last one. It can be any new number as long as it's not the same as the last one. That way you don't have to worry about maybe you tried to, to transmit an attack and it didn't receive it. All right. Quick look at the software. Again, the, the Teensy is great to work with. Over the years I've, I've worked with uh, different microcontrollers and, and uh, I mean, well, maybe I should take one step back for, I know some of you have done this, some of you haven't. You know, the microcontroller, uh, a device with a, with a processor and some memory and, and maybe some uh, more permanent storage uh, to store programs in. Um, typically, they're a pain in the butt to work with, or at least maybe historically. Uh, you get this little uh, computer and then you're trying to wire up a bunch of memory and then, uh, you know, uh, uh, and then you've got to learn a, a, a new assembly language to program the thing in. And that's just nuts. So. Um, uh, more recently, the Arduino, and this is the same environment that the Arduino is programmed in. Um, but it looks like this. It's written a lot like C. Um, and the, uh, you see the, the development environment there on the right. Very simple, uh, but it works. And then the loader on the left. Uh, you press a little button on the, um, up here, yeah, I can't see anything with this little pointy mouse. But anyway, you press one of the buttons up there, it compiles the code. It uploads it to the Teensy in one step and you're done. Whatever you want to run on there is, is just done. Uh, again, we're not going to get depth, in depth into the code. It's available online. Uh, you can pull it all down and run it yourself. Um, all that development environment, it runs in Windows and it runs on Linux. Um, uh, so you can run it where, wherever you prefer. Uh, let's see. So again, just to give you some idea what the code looks like. You've got integer, it does floating point math. You know, I can't believe it. I don't have to write a multiply instruction. That's just <laughs> awesome. So um, uh, for, the, for the RF carrier here, we're, uh, this is on the receiver side. So it's looking for three or more bytes of uh, AA hex, right? That's identifying this upcoming frame. When it finds it, it you know, it, it recognizes that, that the frame's coming. Here's the actual code that, uh, that executes the attacks and uh, a, a couple for the example. The first one here uh, is this uh, mouse DOS kind of attack. Basically it just moves the mouse to the bottom right of the screen. It keeps moving the, the mouse down and right, down and right, down and right continuously. And, and it does it faster than, faster than you can move it. Um, yeah, the, I like the next one. The next one's the next one kind of cute. Let's assume that, you know, you have a, a screen lock that, that comes up nine minutes and, and somebody who likes to walk away from their box. So uh, you set the timer in this case for nine minutes and every nine minutes uh, you move the mouse one pixel and then move it back one pixel. <laughs> cool, right? <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I think it's sweet. You can't even see it, you know, even if you're looking at it. And, and once every nine minutes, you got to be kidding me. So uh, if they get up and, and walk away from their box, uh, that's fine. You can, you can keep it unlocked as long as you want. Um, on the other hand, you know, if somebody's looking at their box, by the time they see it, it's too late. It's like, hey, there's a window. What's that? Oh, it, what was that? Oh, it must be a Windows thing. <laughs> it's, it's gone. And as long as it doesn't come back, you know, they don't care. <laughs> so, sometimes their screen's slow because now it's all getting streamed across the network. But. Um, and again, just for an example, uh, the Linux attack, here's the code for it. Uh, it presses the AUK key, the F2 key, um, uh, it opens a, a GNOME terminal and it types gedit in it and then it types, you know, this machine was pwned by Monte. So the code's simple, it's straightforward, easy to do and it's online. If you want it, there it is. Uh, this presentation, by the way, the one on the disc is a little out of date. I mean, it's still valid, but I've got a lot more stuff in this one, so the full talk is there, is there too, and the code. Um, all right, a, a quick look at some other implementations. Um, you know, I'm a little paranoid, 
and uh, I